Former professional footballer Frederick Omar Canute scored many goals for teams like Tottenham Hotspur and Seville. But after retiring in 2013, the French-born Muslim of Malian descent turned his attention to the work of God. The day I meet God, I'm not going to be uh, asked about how many goals I've scored in my career, uh, even though it would be nice <laughs> to add this on my scale. In 2020, he helped raise over a million dollars to build Seville's first mosque in nearly 700 years, bringing a well-needed spiritual center to the city's diverse Muslim population. So what makes him tick? And can we be inspired by his story? Our guest today is uh, somebody who a lot of you will know, if not all of you, even those football fans and those who aren't necessarily ardent football fans but are aware of a lot of the good work that uh, he does both um, at home and abroad, uh, Freddy Omar Kanute. Firstly, uh, Omar, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, little Freddy or Fred, what did they call you when you were younger? Oh, uh, yeah, Freddy, Fred, uh, Fredo, <laughs> okay. everything, lots of, lots of nicknames, but, uh, um, and some of them Omar as well, uh, mm. because this is, some people think that this is a name I took when I reverted, but I actually half reverted because my background is uh, mixed, very mixed from Christian and Muslim background and uh, French, Malian. And I have the two names officially since birth. So I didn't oh. pick the, the name Omar. Uh, I was born with this name, Frederic Omar Canute. <laughs> so just to make it clear. And, um, and yeah, I grew up in uh, like, uh, pretty much happy place grew up in the suburbs of lyon in france and uh with i mean family of five uh one brother one sister and uh and and yeah i was like very very energetic kid always outside playing football before i could even walk uh kicking in everything in the house so my mom had to take me out and and introduce me to football basically and, um, and, and, and yes, very, very happy, uh, I mean, childhood, I would say. Uh, and um, and uh, what can I say about myself now? That, that, what was the, what was the uh, Kanute household like? Was it one that was uh, religious or was it one where you say, alhamdulillah, it was a happy childhood? Uh, what, what did your parents do? What were the kind of things that they would teach you growing up? Yeah, this is, this is quite interesting because I didn't gr uh, grow up in a religious uh, family or I would say in a much uh, believing uh, family. So it was quite uh, secular, um, but we were at the same time, we were quite free to, uh, to, 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 to believe in whatever we wanted to believe. Uh, they were not against uh, religion. My, my dad, for example, was... Uh, from a uh, it was Malian, was Malian, uh, and it was from like a even his family from Mali, even though Mali is 95 percent Muslim uh, officially, his family was also mixed. There are some Christian in his family, some Muslim in his family. So he was telling me since a very young age, he started to practice Islam, he was even fasting or before, before even puberty and so on. So I, I was always like, I always had the background of uh, re religion in, 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 in some way, um, and uh, um, a basic knowledge about what Islam is. Uh, and on my mom's side, more like a French side, uh, Christian background, and as well her, she was really um, attracted with all religious, uh, um, I would say religious uh, education from a young age. She wanted even to be to become a, a nun, we said in, in English. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, when she was a kid, she went, after she rejected uh, uh, kind of uh, all kind of faith or more religion, not faith maybe, but religion institutions. So, so, so yeah, we were quite free uh, deciding uh, whatever we wanted to believe in, actually. Um, but I think naturally, uh, I, I would say that the, 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 the fitra was kicking in. 
I, I was always like really uh, attracted to um, belief in a broad sense. Uh, when I was very young, I didn't really know about Islam or, 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 or Christianism or Christianity. Were there many mosques and, and religious institutions where you were in Lyon at the time growing up? When I grew up in a neighborhood where it's a very mixed community, so I had a lot of friends that were like from North African background, North African background and family. Uh, there, there were like some Turks as well in my neighborhood. There were some like uh, obviously French or uh, and and uh, from Italian family, Portuguese family. It was a really really good mix. So I got introduced to the practice at a very young. Um, age because I could see from my from my friends I could see obviously that uh, a Muslim didn't uh, eat pork they were fasting during the month of Ramadan uh, uh, so 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 yeah I was really fam uh, familiar uh, familiar with all these kind of practices from a very young age yeah. okay so where what was the trigger point that you know you said you grew up with that background and with an awareness of religion and an interest when did you decide to do that semi-reversion, as you call it? Um, yes, yeah, so as I said, I, I was always kind of really intrigued by an important question, uh, transcendent and almost metaphysical question since a young age. This is quite strange. And when I uh, remember about it, I, could, I can easily remember when I was a small child and I was asking myself some question about death, about what happens after death, about why am I here? I could have been born in another family. I could have been white. I could have been, I didn't decide. So I was asking my, myself all these kind of questions and the, and the purpose of life at a very young age. And later when I discussed that with my parents or with some people, People, they were a bit, say, no, come on, at 10 years old, you don't ask this. But I think all the kids, somehow, they ask these kind of questions at one point or another. And um, I would say, um, I remember when I was around 11, 12, because as I said, I grew up with some friends that were from, like, um, Muslim background and so on. So I remember my first religious uh, practice was actually fasting during, during the month of Ramadan. Not the whole month, but because I was, I don't remember my age exactly, but I must, I mean, I must have been ex with fasting and, and attracted by this practice. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry if sometimes it cuts, you know, the, the connection is not so good. Uh, so, so I, I started actually to, uh, so I decided to do one day of fasting when I was very young. I was 11, 12 years old, even though nobody in my family was doing it uh, that, that month. And uh, it was a very, very like interesting experience. So I would say that at a very young age, I was kind of attracted to a kind of practice, a kind of um, putting, in, putting into practice if you believe in God or if you believe in something it has to be reflected in your daily life or in your activity or in what you uh, decide to uh, 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 to do or not do so so I, I did this little exper experience when I was when I was young but after I would have to say that I didn't think much about religion until I become I became like in my late uh, teenage years or even uh, young adult years uh, uh, late uh, 19 uh, early 20s, I started to really get more into uh, religions, to uh, educate myself, to read a lot. And um, that's when I decided that Islam was the religion that was the best, uh, the most suited to me, to what I believed in. And, um, and it, it was probably the, the, the purity of this religion, because obviously I had also some Christian friends from a young Young age, I were uh, go, going to uh, oblige the kind of institution. I'm not here to uh, to to um, to uh, judge any religion or whatever. But I knew that the, the the way in Islam we had that direct link, that sincere and direct link with the Creator, without any intermediary. Uh, uh, I think I got really, really attracted with this kind of 
of practice and relationship with a lot of books try to understand things, I ask questions and so on, and I start. So was this was happening, I guess, at the same time, I know there's a bit of a, uh, can I, can I, can, in your connection. Can I check if some someone in my family is using internet? Maybe it's easier yeah, if they can cut. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, going to yeah, try yeah. that. That's fine. So just for those who uh, just joined us, uh, this is a informal discussion we're having with um, uh, former uh, or retired footballer, uh, Frederick Omar Kunute, um, going through his personal life and uh, his mission and what kind of inspired him. Uh, so what you need yeah, to do is you, yeah. need to, you need to cancel their Netflix uh, subscription. All the kids. <laughs> ah, it must be the reason, yeah. <laughs> so, so this was going on. You, as you explained that, you know that intrigue, and I, and I think a lot of, uh, you know, we do hear this particularly, I guess, with um, uh, people growing up in Western culture, uh, when they identify maybe the uh, that direct connection with uh, God that Islam um, offers, in that you don't need a priest, you don't need to do confession. You don't need mm -hmm. to necessarily go and ask permission to convert. Mm -hmm. It is that direction between you uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which, which, which is appealing. And what I want to ask about this is that as a footballer, and as somebody um, who I am assuming in your late teens, you had already decided this is the career that you're pursuing, right? Mm -hmm. um, did you see that there was any contradiction in those two paths, the personal spiritual realization and exploration that you were looking at? and the professional one that you were uh, trying to pursue? Did you feel at any point that they were going to cross uh, in a positive or a negative way where they couldn't be, uh, you couldn't reconcile the two? Um, I think uh, the, a, few, a few weeks ago, someone asked me the, a similar question about how did you balance your faith and uh, your profession, your, your, your job and your career as a footballer? And actually, without even uh, thinking, I would say that it's, it's, it's my faith that helped me balance everything. It's not, I, I've never thought about opposing or, 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 or cross uh, corresponding my faith with, it's, it, for me, my faith is not negotiable or, or it's not like something I can compromise because this is this is my life it would be like a compromising on myself which is impossible so it's more like I need it to be able to uh, do everything else and so obviously in my sport it doesn't it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that it has to be easy all the time <laughs> it's it's it was never guaranteed to us and on the opposite if something is guaranteed to us is that we're gonna go through some Struggle. We're going to have some trials, whatever happens, whether it is positive or negative. The struggle and the trials we're going to uh, go through are guaranteed. But the, 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 the guarantee of, of, of having everything, everything easy and being a Muslim in the West or playing football or whatever, because playing football, alhamdulillah, this is not a big challenge. But let's think about uh, uh, Islamophobia in other sectors where it's even more difficult or they receive more pressure from their peers and so on. For us, alhamdulillah, we can, we, we're in a good situation. We can still play football. And to be honest, people, most of the time, they don't really care as long as we score goals or we play well and so on. You know, they can manage with that. But some people work every day very hard and they are maybe a minority. We have to think about them. The problem is not about us. So I would say that... Um, uh, yes, there was some challenge, but my faith helped me overcome them, uh, and and uh, and obviously we are in a privileged situation because even in football, even uh, practicing, observing Muslim in football is still pretty easy uh, to to. Uh, but see, uh, I, I and I think that's something that a lot of people would admire you saying that and and, and take some sort of. Uh, 
reassurance it's important that you, as you say you think of things relatively so uh, you know a footballer playing for a big club comparative to somebody suffering for example in China uh, as a Muslim of course there's no comparison but everything also is relative right so as a young yeah, yeah. you know uh, African uh, uh, French from African descent uh, you know essentially a, a, a black Muslim footballer who everyone around them wants to make it big so they maybe are going to certain events or uh, choosing a certain lifestyle, that is a big challenge for somebody who doesn't have the maturity yeah. that you exactly. have now, right? So yeah. how, even, did, don't, how did religion play into that? Yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it was easy, uh, but it's just like it's good also to always put things into perspective, but it's now I can do that. But when I was in my early 20s and uh, I could see something very small not going my way, I, I was just like bursting and say, oh, this is unjust and this. And now with a little bit, I would say a little bit more wisdom, now I can put everything into perspective. But for a young uh, a footballer, uh, um, let alone being Muslim and, and, and from, I would say, a minority, of, of course you see some things like this. I remember when I was like 19, 20, and I decided to practice my religion i was in lyon at the time playing in olympic lyonnais and i could see some 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 strange i was quite naive at the time mm -hmm. because i thought that me because remember it's before uh, uh, 9 11 so i was quite naive and and uh, rightfully so i say oh just i'm just become a better person i'm becoming a muslim i'm gonna pray i'm gonna try to do to become a better person but it was a, a, a paradox for me because I was seeing people changing their attitude towards me. And, 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 and sometimes some people in the clubs talking about me in my back, I realized after that, they say, oh, he became like a, a fanatic or extreme. He's even praying, hiding himself to pray and stuff like this. And a lot of people were talking bad about me. And after a while, I realized that, you know, so I know this is a challenge. And, and it wasn't always easy, okay? But, um, but what I wanted to say is that, uh, is that yeah, with, with hindsight and with a little bit of, uh, of, of, of experience, you understand that it's, it's, it's absolutely um, fine to go through some challenges. Uh, it's gonna happen, it's guaranteed. Uh, but yeah, you, 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 you have to grow out of it. But yeah, from, from that, that period in Lyon, as I was saying, it was pre, it was before 9-11. So imagine when I arrived in, I remember some particular uh, uh, events when I arrived in West Ham uh, in 2000. Mm -hmm. And the year after is 2001. So after 9-11, lot of questions. I was the only one. Muslim in the, in the, in the team that uh, they could talk to me because they knew that maybe uh, they saw that I was more practicing maybe and so on. So I was like bombarded with question. Subhanallah. Give, give, us, give us an example. Uh, I can give you a very clear example. I remember uh, one of the staff there, uh, I would, uh, it was, I don't, I wouldn't even say if it's a, uh, uh, medical or, or something else, but it, someone from the staff and from the club asked me, "Oh, yeah, this is this is like really bad what happened, and um, and uh, the, the, these uh, these uh, jihadis they are criminals and so on." It was just like uh, about uh, we knew that uh, Bush was going to attack basically after a while we knew that they were going to attack and i was against that like many many people muslim and muslims you know um, because we knew at the time most of us knew at the time that it was only an excuse you know uh, mm -hmm. and and i said yeah but you know criminal on both sides uh, um, i think bush is also very dangerous for humanity you know because he's doing he's doing i think he's doing something wrong and he was shocked Mm -hmm. It was shocked because I was bringing uh, like something a little bit. I was not saying the other ones were not criminal. I was just saying, yeah, but Bush as well is a criminal. And, and, and he was shocked. And I understood at that point that like things were never going to be the same again, you know, and, 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 and passion will arise and so on. And, um, and after that, I mean, you know, you know what happened. But, 
but but yeah, I can understand that it, it it's a uh, the, the post 9/11 it was a challenge for all the for all the the, the Muslims. But we have to believe that things happen for a reason, uh, uh, and sometimes it's very very sad and unacceptable. But we have to make sense of anything that happened and try to improve ourselves in any situation. No doubt. But I want to I wanna maybe take it in, an, in another kind of idea for, for people. You know, you said something which was interesting. I thought you were going to go down this, this route, but then, you know, you said, for example, when you started practicing, you know, you're, there is that expectation that you're doing something good. Alhamdulillah, you have become a better person in the eyes of God, according to your morality, right? And sometimes as humans, we have this um, subconscious belief that, that if we do so, if we do good, then we deserve good to happen to us, right? Mm -hmm. So, was there ever a time where you felt, okay, you know what? How come I'm praying, I'm I'm doing my duties, I'm trying to be a better Muslim, but for example, I'm not scoring those hat tricks, <laughs> you know? And then you start doubting, like, why is the magic not working? <laughs> Subhanallah, all the time, beginning, all the time. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah, this is one of the tests of faith mm -hmm. as well, and. SubhanAllah, at the time I didn't know much uh, uh, about the Qur'an. I was starting to read the Qur'an and so on, but I didn't know much about things. If I knew at the time, I say, oh, this is not that I'm going to be challenged. But on the other way, uh, I mean, I, I, was, I was thinking upside down, and that's also a little bit normal, because when you converge, you say, oh, now everything's going to be easy. But mm -hmm. that's when the challenges start. And, and yes, yeah, subhanAllah, I remember these kind of things. Uh, I was, I had some injuries, man, too many injuries. And I said, I'm praying now, I'm, 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 I'm better. I thought that I was going to do one, one simple dua before a game and I was going to score <laughs> five goals and so on. I said, no, this is not about that. This is not about that. Later, obviously, I understood that it was more, much, much, much bigger than only scoring goals, you know. But at the beginning, you think that your life is solved and everything's going to be easy. And subhanAllah, after you learn history, you learn uh, uh, what happened to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you learn what, what, what the, the companions went through and so on. And you understand that, subhanAllah, this is very easy for us, alhamdulillah. Uh, there's the, obviously the, the verse in the Quran, uh, uh, the people who believe yeah. feel that they should just say that they believe and that's it and they're not tested yeah. so for sure that's something to remember and maybe here is where i want to ask you you know despite that so despite those like we said if we look at it from a relative relative rather perspective mm -hmm. so despite looking at you know coming from an ethnic minority being a muslim 9-11 and obviously the kind of emotions no charge that comes with uh, youth and so forth what is it that made you then think not only to say okay that's enough on my plate enough of a challenge but actually you went further with things like for example showing support for palestine uh, uh you know uh, on the pitch and talking about other social justice causes what was your inspiration for you to decide not just to stand your own ground but actually essentially be a hero for other people uh, obviously i wouldn't use the the the, the word the hero because honestly when i did that it was just like maybe uh even selfish to be honest because because i couldn't stand that and I, I, I think in some way I, I was always a little bit a kind of uh, naive and utopist like uh, thinking that no, it's not normal. Injustice is not normal. And since I was a kid, I remember when, when, when I was like being kicked out of the classroom and so on, it was always because of an injustice, because something small, but that was not quite right. And I was speaking out and I was doing so. I have this since I was a kid, even with my parents, subhanAllah, even though I was very, very respectful, when they were going in, in, in a shop and they were touching things, I was a baby. Mm -hmm. I was touching things as well. Of, of course, I could break things. And they said, don't touch. I said, why are you touching then? And I was <laughs> shouting and I was, you know. So I was always like kind of um, a, a bit... Um, a bit, uh, I would say, uh, against any form of injustice. And 
I remember at the end of uh, 2008 when what was happening, and it's not only the end of 2008, it happened for the last uh, 100 years of this, this injustice on the Palestinian people. But um, I just couldn't, I just, I just couldn't live with myself if I didn't do anything. And to be honest, like what I could do the best was playing football. And I said, okay, I'm going to use that. I don't care. People say, oh, we shouldn't mix politics with this, with that. For me, any excuse to bring about justice is, is, is a good thing. And I have always seen uh, that any skills we have, any tools we have, anything, we, every know-how should be a tool to, to, to bring about more justice, more fairness, more, more, more everything. And, and, and I said, no, I just couldn't I, because I was really shocked. Like I'm shocked today with what happened to George Floyd, for example. I mean, it's been like three, four days. I, I, honestly, I, I, can't, I can't sleep. I'm, 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 I'm in shock since I've seen the video. And I know a lot of people are in shock. You know what I mean? And we know it's not always... Um, it's not always um, easy. I mean, a person, you know, we, we, we have a lot to uh, we have a lot to manage in terms of injustice and so on. Because uh, for me, there's no difference. You're talking about uh, the situation of Palestine, but obviously, I'm not an Arab. But for me, this is obviously a clear injustice, and this is the same for the Chinese, for the for the for the Uyghur in in China, and so this is just unacceptable. Of course, sometimes you, we have to pick and choose and say, okay, let's not dilute our effort because I can't, in the same time, fight in the same amount uh, of effort with all the injustice in the world. This is impossible. You wouldn't even uh, uh, live your own life if you did that. And some people are doing almost that, to be honest. And, 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 and congratulations to them, mashallah. But it's just like, we have to stand with justice and against injustice wherever it arises, you know? And, and uh, today with what happened, well, as I said, what happened with the case of uh, George Floyd, it's, it's really, really disturbing for a lot of people, but it's when we know that it's been around for, a long, long time, and the only difference is that, like that video, was just a little bit uh, shocking and in daylight and so on. But how well, many I want to ask video? about. I want to ask about George Floyd because, and I want to link it to something that you said uh, in in the beginning of that answer. Where you said, you know, some people said, you know, football and politics and don't mix and so forth. But in the end of the day, yeah. footballers are public figures. They are icons that uh, hundreds of thousands of millions of people look to especially young people, and they see them as an inspiration. They have your pictures hung up on their, uh, above their beds. Uh, they have, uh, you know, I remember uh, as a school kid, you used to have those sticker albums for the Premier League and you'd exchange stickers and so forth. So there is a following that you have. Not speaking about social justice or not speaking about the issues that actually impact on people's lives. Is that what has allowed for something like what we see now with the systematic endemic racism that we see in the United States or the injustice in Palestine, or what is going on in China, and so forth. Think of the, for example, the Chinese Football League, right? It's become a massive thing in the past few years. If some of the big footballers had said, you know what, it's not about Muslim or not Muslim, mm -hmm. it's about we are against human rights violations, and therefore we will not play in China unless China yeah. does that. Yeah. Wouldn't that yeah. make an impact? Look, uh, I totally agree. And this is someone who played in China who's telling you that. Mm -hmm. I played in China, I didn't know about this. If it was today, I wouldn't go there. You know what I mean? And, and, and I have a lot of fantastic fans in China. This is not about, about like particular cases. I'm not saying all the Chinese are bad or whatever, but there, there, there is a strong injustice there. So, uh, alhamdulillah, you can places. You're going to make money. You're gonna, it's not a problem. But I think, yes, yeah, sometimes... I would encourage, I will not say, I will not judge anyone who thinks that you cannot uh, uh, mix politics and football or whatever. I will not judge that. I've done it. I'm, 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 I'm in it already. It's too late for me. You know what I mean? And I assume that and, and, and it's okay. I, I, I would be very uncomfortable with myself not doing so. So it depends. I'm not here to judge if you have to do it or, or not, but I would certainly advocate for doing it. You know what I mean? 
I would certainly advocate, so use whatever you think uh, is in your power to try to change and bring about more justice and equality and equity. So, so it, it, I think it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a personal uh, choice, obviously. We shouldn't uh, become too uh, totalitarian in terms of, oh, we need to bring justice and we all need to do that. that. No, some people will not have the same interest. That's fine with me. But, but those who have, have a responsibility. Listen, at the end of the day, more power, more money, more fame brings more responsibility. That's what I believe in. That's what I believe in. And I would summarize this with, be careful what you wish for. If you want to become famous or you want to have more, or if you want that, that, especially as a believer, uh, uh, okay, you speak better Arabic than me. You, it, it comes from masculia, responsibility. So we're going to be questioned. We're going to be questioned and we will have to respond about whatever has been given to us. So the more we, we're being given, the more responsibility we have. As a believer, I believe in that. So be careful with what you wish for. If you think you cannot commit too much in the good causes or, or being rich without giving anything back or whatever, be careful, be careful because the backlash can be, can be, can be quite important, I believe. For sure. I'm going to ask you a couple more questions before I take some questions from the audience who have been sending us uh, some. You know, we, you were speaking about uh, some of those different incidents that you remember, particularly after 9-11 conversation you had with one of the um, uh, back, backroom staff in, in, in West Ham. I want to ask you about, you know, everybody in their life, I guess, or most people in their life, they have a certain, uh, you know, they either call it a bottleneck moment or a crisis moment or something that triggers, that changes things, right? Um, where it's either it's a make or break. Something that really, and I, it's an intrusive question, so feel free if you don't want to answer it, but uh, I, I ask it from the idea of if there is some sort of inspiration that people can get. What was that moment, or was there a moment like that for you, where really it made you kind of question uh, deeper inside yourself and maybe actually search for some sort of strength that allowed you then to rise even stronger afterwards? Subhanallah, there is, I'm going to try to be brief because I know uh, we have limited time and uh, maybe some questions after and so on. Uh, I would say, uh, let me remember two, maybe two uh, events. Uh, and it's maybe not what you expect, but the, the, you know, when, when I really reverted uh, to, to, to Islam and I really choose my word reverted, which I think are more relevant to me, um, it's... Um, you know, it's never easy because you have a past, you have old habits, you have, uh, you never prayed before you start to pray five times. It, it can be overwhelming at the beginning. And I remember in my early 20s, I started, I tried to pray. But imagine someone who starts to pray something that is completely, um, uh, 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 it's completely away from, from his personal habits, daily habits. And he starts doing that. This is kind of, a, of traumatizing, almost. This is a shock. Because you do something where you're supposed to get closer to Allah and be very, very sincere, full of sincerity doing it, and you don't feel anything. This is something that we have to address as Muslims ourselves, even though uh, uh, most of us, we've been Muslim for, for decades, we have to ask this question all the time. And I remember at the beginning, I was, I was praying, and at, one, at the beginning, it's all, 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 all good and you feel great. But when you're alone and you have to, uh, um, you have to uh, perform your five players and so, uh, prayers and so on, and you, you, you feel uh, that you don't have so much response uh, uh, in terms of spirituality and growth and so on, it's hard sometimes. And I remember at one point I put everything into question mm -hmm. and I was afraid. I said, what's happening to me? I was so into it and now I don't want to pray anymore. And it was at the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. And subhanAllah, I never stopped searching. And I think also this is something that we have to, we have to call ourselves into question in terms of our level of sincerity. Never stop searching. It's okay to have doubts. It's okay sometimes not to be convinced 100%. But if you're sincere, you have good intention, 
and you search and you work for it. It's not enough to have good intentions. Try, alhamdulillah, in our society now we get access to education, we can open books, we can try to listen to people, especially now with the social media and, and internet and so on. So I never stopped really searching and I was asking myself even more questions than before, but I had this strong doubt. And I remember it was during Ramadan, subhanAllah, Ramadan again. And I, was, I stopped praying for one uh, uh, period of time, but I wanted to fast because subhanAllah, I, I love to fast. And I remember in that period as well, I went to Mali and it opened my eyes. Not like over there, the people are all pious or whatever, you know, they, 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 they are wrong people everywhere. But I was not uh, being focused so much on how people um, behave, but I was more like, again, fascinated and reconnecting with the practice. I was seeing people like working, this is time for prayer, stopping, putting their mat on the floor, praying. I was listening to the Adhan. I was seeing people uh, uh, breaking fast together and stuff. And it, it rang a bell again, you know, to me, it, 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 it uh, woke something up in, 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 my, in my soul. I felt it. And I was asking questions. I remember I was with my, my dad, Rahimahullah, mm -hmm. and we were like, uh, in 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 uh, in the country and he was seeing some of his friends some of them were believers some less and i remember i was even asking questions because they were saying things that didn't didn't add up to me for example there was that brother was saying yeah but anyway we don't have to ask too much too much question uh, in islam to ask ourselves too much question we just ask to pray and it's part of our uh, anyway so everything that is part of our culture is beautiful and that's it. Mm -hmm. I was not convinced with that. I said, no, something is missing because if you enter into this deen, into, in, in, into this religion, you have to be convinced because this is too powerful. You cannot just say, oh, because I was born Muslim and this is part of my, my culture and everything that is part of my culture is beautiful. For me, it was, not, it was just not good enough. So I, I, I kept asking myself and I asked, the, I asked the, 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 my dad's father, uh, my uh, uh, father's friend, I asked him, I said, but isn't that a, a lack of sincerity to think like this? Because religion has to be sincere. You have to do it for God, not just because it's your culture. And he didn't know what to answer. And I was 19, 19 20 years old, and they were a little bit shocked that I even asked questions because in our culture, in, back in Africa, young people don't just mm. intervene in adults, <laughs> in adults' conversation. So, so anyway, I was asking myself a lot. I was searching, subhanAllah, I was searching. I was not good with myself. I came back to Lyon after this. It was a winter holiday. I had a few days off. I came back to Lyon and subhanAllah, I was with, with, with my friends just like, uh, how do you say that? Uh, killing time. How do you say in English? Just, killing time, uh, yeah. Yeah, hanging out. Time. yeah, hanging out. In, in town, walking, looking at the shops and so on. And it was still Ramadan, I remember. And subhanAllah, I started to feel something like uh, uh, squeezing my heart. I, 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 I started to feel at that moment, I was with my friends, people I love. They are good friends of mine. And by the way, most of them, they, they reverted to Islam as well. And, but something was missing. And I... I, I I just couldn't resist the urge, the urge of praying. SubhanAllah, it was just something crazy. It was like I was not like uh, uh, fulfilling my primary function on this earth. I was like, I need, I need to pray. I need to put my forehead on the floor right now. I can't bear this anymore. And SubhanAllah, we went to visit one of our friends and I, get, uh, I went into, uh, uh, into his place. And I said, please give me a towel. Uh, uh, where is the bathroom? Let's go. And I went to the, to the bathroom. I did wudu and I prayed. And at that moment, I knew, subhanAllah. I knew that. So sometimes it's not about something extraordinary happening. It's just like the signs are there all the time. Allah is calling you to pray. He's calling you to faith all the time. But we don't see the signs. It's not... <laughs> the absence of signs is just our inability or an inability to see them and when I, ca I came back home that same day where i started and decided to pray i came back home subhanallah i opened the letter box and 
I take, I, I see the letter, I see a letter from, um, uh, um, from my, one of my aunts in Mali. And this is the first time in her life and in my life, I receive a letter from that particular aunt. I received that letter, I opened. And in the letter, it was a little booklet about how to perform prayer. I had never, you know, I don't even speak, oh. I, I don't even speak good Bambara, uh, our um, Malian uh, 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 um, la uh, language. Uh, but so I never really spoke with that aunt well because she speaks only Bambara and so on. But it's just like that letter come from nowhere. I don't even know why. They, she didn't even know I was struggling to try to pray or to come to... She didn't know anything about that. And that particular day, I come back home, I open the letterbox. The first time she writes to me in her life, it's uh, just a booklet uh, of how to pray. And... That day I was just convinced. I was just convinced and I never, uh, I, I never let go after that. And uh, the second thing uh, that is a little bit, there are many things because the sign I said, you see them all the time, to be honest. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. almost a lack of respect toward God to say, oh, I see one or two signs or there is a particular. But yes, sometimes we are more sensitive to some, some, some signs. And the, the other one was, unfortunately, um, uh, may Allah have mercy on his soul, the death of my nephew who was nine years mm. old. And, and it was at that, at that time as well, I was into Islam and so on, but still I was at the beginning, but mm. the loss of my nephew that didn't even have a chance, you know what I mean? I mean, not much chance to, to, to have a longer life and, and, and fulfill his opportunities and so on. I just felt, again, a sense of responsibility and the re responsibility of night. I mean, so I'm not saying that I'm perfect and I'm not doing like some bad things or, some, or, or, or I'm thinking uh, only praying all, all day. No, but I'm just saying that since... He, he, he passed, I, I, I knew that I was not going to go back to um, futilities. That's the way, the word in... Uh, tri tri trivial kind of things, yeah. Trivial kind of things. I knew that they, I was not even allowed to do that because I, I, was not, I was not allowed to waste my time anymore. doesn't mean not enjoying yourself. I was just saying that to a trivial life and... and uh, and there are, are, are two big signs uh, for me that helped me uh, go ahead with my, with my journey, I would say.